going on YouTube? Tone M here doing a video on the taking apart and cleaning of the Sky 9mm pistol and um, this one particular happens to be my wife's. Yep, bought it for her. She wanted one so I went ahead and got this one for her. She liked the size of the handle and everything. Um, this is the CPX2 model, and um, I don't know if anybody, I'm pretty sure there's a couple of you out there that already know about this model or this gun in general or this brand, this company, um, but Sky, S-C-C-Y, uh, is here in Daytona Beach, Florida, uh, where they make them, awesome, uh, go hometown, but um, also the CPX, they, they make two models, the CPX1 and the CPX-2. The CPX-1, uh, which is their first model, obviously, uh, has a uh, safety on it. The CPX-2 does not. Um, that was the difference, and the reason they did that was for uh, concealed carry purposes and whatnot, uh, because the, I guess the CPX-1 had some slight issues with snagging in the holster pocket, whatever. Um, you know, and of course, if you conceal carry, a lot of the terminology or think process of that thought process is when you pull your weapon to use it, you want to be able to pop the shots as quick as possible because it's life or death. So, I guess they felt like a safety uh, would hinder that, which I get that. It's cool. Um, it's got a very long trigger pull, it's double action. Uh, so, basically, um, once you slide a slide the once you rack the slide and chamber around, um, you can pull the trigger, obviously, and um, it's it's all double action, and it's got a nice long pull, and then it releases. Now, the drawback with the double action is that when you go to quick fire it, if you're not practicing enough with it or haven't practiced enough with it, um, you'll you'll have a misfire. Uh, basically because what'll happen is is that trigger doesn't get to reset fully. So if the trigger doesn't reset, the firing pin won't reset all the way. So basically you're sitting there, you fire you fire that first shot, if you don't let the trigger go all the way out like it wants to, um, you'll end up short cycling your weapon and uh, you won't fire that second round off. Now if you have practice with it or you've practiced a lot with it and whatnot and you're used to that, then you'll, you know, you can quick fire this all day long because um, in your mindset you'll already know, let the finger, es essentially just let go of the trigger and, you know, go back to it. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do with this video is take it apart and give it a quick clean and uh, basically just kind of show you one, how to take it apart and two, how I clean my pistols and keep them uh, ready, uh, I guess you'd say, just ready to fire, ready ready for um, protect, protecting, you know, whatever you want to consider it ready for. Uh, ready for the range, but um, essentially, what you want to do is you go ahead and um, obviously check the pistol, which, as you can see, was already open. There's no magazine. There's no rounds in it. And um, this is your slide. Let me go ahead and put that down. My bad. This is your slide lock here, and. Uh, that is your uh, button, more or less. It, it's actually not really a button. It's more like a pin um, that holds the slide and everything together. Uh, what you want to do is, obviously, first step, check, see if it's got a round in it. Second step, you want to pull the slide back, push up your... just did that again so you can see that from this angle push up your uh, slide lock latch 
then you want to take that pin there and pull it out. You can either do it with your fingernail sometimes. In my case, it wants to be stubborn. Mm. Nope, it's not going to do it for me. All right, when that fails, get yourself something to pry it with a little bit. You could use a little flathead, a little... Uh, whatever you want to use me I use my little uh, hatchet there um, I, I kind of take it with me to the range if I need to cut something or use it as a hammer or whatnot or pry bar anyway uh, pop that out there and basically once you do that you want to hold the slide release it and you'll be able to take it all apart just like that it slides right out forward like that and there you go that is apart there's your frame put it right there there's your frame and then here is your slide this is a recoiled operated pistol meaning the barrel moves with the slide when it's firing um, for those who don't know the difference there's a blowback design and then there's a recoil operated uh, recoil operated as I said before is uh, as the slide is going backwards to eject the round the barrel slightly goes back with it tilting downwards to pick up the other round that gets pushed in once it does that they all move back together in unison and it's ready to fire and uh, it does that supposedly it's supposed to help it cycle better uh, it's supposed to be more um, reliable that way, uh, less failure to feeds and all that. That honestly is opinion based. I mean, I have a few blowback pistols which, uh, go ahead and do a quick rundown on that. Uh, for those who don't know what a blowback pistol, those are pistols that are completely opposite to this type of pistol, recoil operated. Blowback pistol, the barrel doesn't move at all. It is fixated to the barrel uh, or to the the frame it is part of the frame um, now there are some which I'll do in another video like the Phoenix arm uh, that comes in a 22 caliber or a 25 caliber um, that's another small pocket pistol and um, it's also a blowback however that barrel comes out uh, when you clean it, when you take it apart, that barrel actually comes out of the frame. But um, essentially the definition for a blowback is the barrel does not move whatsoever when it's firing. Um, the slide itself is also much heavier uh, due to the fact that it's a blowback design. Um, what that means is the slide uh, is heavier because once the, the round is fired uh, there's enough force that pushes that heavy slide back allows the shell to eject and then gives it enough time for another shell to come in its place and then rechamber recoil operated uh, like this pistol is it doesn't matter um, the slides are lighter the pistol itself is lighter that's another key difference between recoil operated and uh, blowback design is that uh, recoil operated pistols tend to be ten times lighter than any blowback pistol because again uh, as said before the uh, slides are a lot heavier on blowback pistols to give it time to chamber another round uh, recoil operated pistols don't have that issue they literally um, as the gun's firing, that barrel comes back and picks up the other round right from the magazine and, you know, goes back into business. So it, it essentially it works together. All, all the pieces work together. Um, so once you get that off, move your slide or move your uh, frame aside. Keep track of that little guy there because it's important. Um, you want to go ahead and take your recoil spring out which is this guy here next to the recoil rod 
and then from there you just push your barrel out and there you go now like I was saying um, just in case my explanation didn't get understood as the pistol is being fired with a recoil operated um, pistol and I'm going to show this upside down but it, you'll get the idea at least um, once the round is fired or the pistol is fired the slide goes back the barrel itself will go back with it but it gets to a certain point where the barrel will actually tilt down which is why it's got that nice little slope there the feed ramp um, that's another thing also you'll see uh, in recoil operated pistols as different for the uh, uh, blowback design is the feed ramps on recoil operated pistols are a lot smoother they go with the grooving all the way into the barrel there's no little lip there's no uh, like separation there's no gap nothing at all it's literally just a smooth entrance all the way into the barrel and that's great for different types of ammo you don't just have to use full metal jacket round nose you can use hollow points you can use um, uh, uh, what do they call that that uh, snake shot or whatever and it won't um, it won't get stuck there will be no failures to feed um, a lot of blowback design pistols because the barrel doesn't move it relies heavily on the magazine pushing the rounds up and into the barrel once the slide goes forward have lips on the barrel right up on the inside so the, the ramp goes up and then there's like a little um, groove basically it's the the barrel itself that they didn't machine down um, so they just machined a little bit of the groove uh, for it to go up and then the rest of it's just all barrel so you have a gap or a slight bump or lip or whatnot and round nose uh, full metal jackets work perfectly fine in blowbacks but with that uh, feed ramp the way it is with that lip on it uh, you can't use uh, hollow points or flat nose or anything like that because they'll get stuck um, so that's the one drawback with uh, the blowback design um, now it's not necessarily a hindrance if you have some time patience and some know-how uh, you can take a, 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 a tool or a file or a, a, a router and just um, not a router what was that I, th I think it's the right word that the the electric tool basically get yourself one of those uh, grinder bits and and polish the feed ramp yourself and just go ahead and get it a smooth and then you can use whatever round you want through uh, the blowback pistol um, so you know that's that's one big difference between recoil operated and blowback also but anyhow um, that's all taken apart and what you want to do or what I do is basically I just go ahead and give it all a quick squirt down now one thing I know a lot of people probably don't pay attention to or don't know about unless you have the different types is on the pistol here uh, this particular pistol and I'm pretty sure for a lot of the uh, recoil operated pistols um, this slide right here or the part of the slide right here that's housing your uh, firing pin and um, that's basically that right there that's where the the striker will hit pushes into that and knocks your firing pin in this um, the firing pin don't co doesn't come out um, there's probably a way to take the slide apart to get to that pin if you needed to I don't know how I've never really had to mess with it um, so I I never really messed with it so I, I, I honestly couldn't tell you if it does or not um, but on blowback design pistols you can pretty much get to your firing pin and uh, the firing pin spring all the time um, at least with the pistols that I have that are blowback 
I don't know if it's the same for all blowback pistols, but um, it pretty much looks about the same. Uh, if I, when I do my uh, my next video on the uh, Phoenix Arm, which is a blowback pistol, I'll uh, I'll re reemphasize that. So for those who are watching this one and are curious if you can get to the uh, firing pin or not on that pistol wait for that uh, video to come out um, but anyhow what I go ahead and do once it's all part like that is I give it a good squirt down um, you can use any kind of brand of uh, oil you want uh, you, there's frog oil there's uh, uh, hops boar oil stuff like that uh, Remington I use Remington, it's just easy, um, not that the other ones are hard or anything like that, um, it's just the brand that I buy, it's probably the cheaper of the, well, I don't know, Hops is pretty cheap too, I, I got this whole cleaning kit here for uh, 8 bucks at Walmart, but um, anyhow, uh, I go ahead, I just get the slide a quick squirt down, I get the barrel outside and inside a good squirt down. Spray the little pin there and the recoil spring. Go ahead and put that down. Then I take the frame and I give it a couple blasts uh, right in this area here. That's your uh, trigger assembly, base, uh, in a nutshell. Um, when the slide goes back, this is the part that pretty much lets the trigger know that it's ready to fire so that point right there um, when the slide go back when the slide goes back gets struck and it locks the trigger forward lets it know that it's ready to fire uh, once you pull the trigger this part goes down and it releases the slide um, well not the slide the uh, the striker that goes to the uh, firing pin and fires the round and all that. Um, what I do is I go ahead and give it a squirt down through there. Um, I don't really mess with the magazine well too much. I mean, you can give it a squirt or two, uh, but basically I like to get that part nice and lube because it's your trigger area and all that. Um, give it a tap. Get yourself a nice little rag here and uh, wipe it down. get your finger up in the magazine area just kind of rub it down and just get off all the excess oil and uh, for those who don't know also uh, Sky is a uh, polymer framed pistol um, plastic uh, Pretty much most pistols are nowadays, <laughs> that polymer or whatever. I go ahead and also wipe down all the parts after they've soaked. Basically, by the time you're done wiping down the frame, um, your soaked parts are pretty much ready to just get a good rub down. It's broken up enough of the soot and whatnot. Um, you don't have to rub hard on the spring. You just want to give it a nice little... Like I said, gentle rub down. You don't want to pinch it, bend it. Um, it's kind of hard to bend the rod, but it is possible uh, if you're heavy-handed. You definitely don't want to kink the spring, um, which is kind of, again, hard to do, but uh, nothing's not possible. So, or nothing's impossible, I should say. Um, give the slide a good rub down. And basically, what what you're doing when you're rubbing it down is just obviously getting all the excess oil, but it's also getting any of the not so stuck soot and everything that's in there um, out. Um, afterwards, you get your nine millimeter brush, which that is not it. Do do do. I just had it, and there it is already attached to the stick, yeah. Let's go ahead and get that out. There we go. And um, because you shot stuff down, 
you go ahead and just push it through. You know, you're not, like I said, you're not trying to rub the uh, rifling out or anything. So don't go like hardcore nuts on it. You just want to give it a good rub down, um, break up all the loose um, excess powder and not burnt up gunpowder, stuff like that. But uh, just push it down, make sure it goes all the way up the barrel. That means, you know, you're pushing out all the excess bull crap and all the breakup. Give it a good blow. Um, you can also, if you're finicky or really anal, um, take the same brush and just kind of scrub down some of the parts on the slide here. Just to, if, I mean, if you see anything that's like really standing out, um, but that's about it. And once you do that, just go ahead and go back over it. Um, with the rag, but once you've sprayed it down and wiped it the first time, it's pretty clean unless you dropped it in mud or something. Um, after you scrub the barrel, you get your next item, which is the cotton swab. As you can see, it's a little dirty. I used it on a couple of my nines, but uh, attach it. You can spray it again if you'd like. Um, or you could just go through with it dry and uh, see what you get out of it. If you look down the barrel and you still see stuff down it, then by all means squirt and repeat. But basically, um, once you get it with the wire brush, you pretty much, again, unless you haven't cleaned it in a long, long time, which shame on you if you haven't, then again, I procrastinate sometimes, so I can understand if it happens. But, um... <laughs> Just rinse and repeat, basically. Um, with the cotton swab, is what I call them, uh, I just kind of put it down the barrel, and I give it a little twist as I push down. Um, I kind of take that concept of uh, cleaning the barrel like you clean your ears. You just want to be gentle. You want to, you know, be thorough, but um, you don't want to break the stick that the cotton swab is attached to and everything, and, um, and you know, you don't want to sit there and polish it and polish it and polish it like, you know, it's going to start shining or something uh, more than it already is. Uh, basically, once you're done with that, it's time to reassemble. Reassembling is really easy. Uh, just repeat everything you did backwards when you took it apart. Yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> if you can... I mean, if you watched the video, then, you, you know, obviously you saw all that. But if you didn't and you just skipped through or whatever, um, then you're not going to understand all that. Basically, uh, put the barrel into the slide like you took it out. Now, with the recoil spring, there is an end that has a nipple right there. I'll see how, if you can see it or not, right there, that nipple. And then there is the flat end. Now, that's important because you can't just put it in the slide all willy-nilly and think, oh, it doesn't matter. It, it does matter. This part goes into that part there. And vice versa, this part goes into this part on the inside. Um, it is strongly emphasized in the video because, believe it or not, people have put it in backwards and wondered why the gun's not working or the spring um just failed uh so there you go once you do that um basically you want to put this end in first and then just slide it on in going to be a pain in the butt for me. Hold on a second, folks. <laughs> Alright, so, 
back to that statement with the nipple and the slide. Uh, I'm a dumbass, so um, basically what I said prior, flip that around. Um, I went ahead and I did that backwards. Or did I? Did I do it on accident? Or did I do it on purpose to prove a point? Um, if you believe that and you're not considering me a complete jackass, then you passed. Uh, for those that uh, heard what I said and, you know, believed me, you failed. Um, this is the part with the nipple that goes into the front of the gun. This part that's flat goes into this part of the barrel. So, let's recap. This part into the slide. This part into the uh, into the slide itself. So for those who caught that mistake, I was testing you. So you passed. For those who didn't catch that, uh, learn. All right. So once that's put back together, then the fun part comes into play, and that is attaching it back to the slide. And really, it's actually kind of simple. And once you get all that together, it just literally slides really easily back into place. Now, that part there, that uh, slide lock comes into play here. You want to pull it all the way back, making sure that the slide attached to the grooves of the um, of the uh, frame. So that way, the slide obviously doesn't go shooting off the slide. Um, you want to move the barrel forward as so. See, the barrel moves freely, which, again, when you're firing, that is what happens. That is actually probably the best example or uh, explanation, or the best visual to the explanation from earlier about how this works. When you fire the pistol, the slide goes back, the barrel goes back with it. As it does that, it's literally picking up around from the magazine and then it moves together forward and you're ready to fire. So, just recap. You put your first round in and you slid the slide forward. You fire. Bang! The slide goes back. This goes back with it. Boom! Picks up a round and as it's back like this, the slide pushes the barrel with the round all the way forward to fire it again. Um, with a blowback pistol, that does not happen. The barrel stays exactly like it is because it's affixated to the uh, frame. So therefore, it does not go back. It stays just like that. The only thing that moves is the slide. And as that goes back, the bullet from the, through the magazine force pushes it up and then the slide racks it forward and repeats the cycle. Um, so that's why sometimes you could have some failure to feeds and whatnot if you're using uh, low powered uh, ammo. Um, if you used high powered ammo or standard ammo, then uh, you normally don't have that problem because it's got enough explosion, enough force to uh, make sure the slide goes back and pushes the slide forward to uh, push the round in. Anyhow, when you go to put this together, uh, when you go, actually it's already together, when you go to put this pin in, you want to slide the barrel forward and you got to watch the hole here and make sure you see that uh, that part of the of the barrel that comes out and had a hole in it with a little slot because this has to go through that. So right now I got it pretty lined up. Push that through. Now the barrel doesn't move. Okay? Now, don't let that um, fool you or confuse you for what I explained as the, you know, when, when you're firing it, the barrel moving and everything because the barrel will still move. Even though this pin is in there and it's not moving right now, it's not doing that because at the moment I have it in a non-firing um, uh, 
mode right now because uh, I got the, lo the slide locked and everything. Uh, this is what it'll look like when you shoot your last round and the slide locks back. Alright, so after that, you want to hold the slide, release that slide lock, let the slide go forward, and there you go. Pull the trigger, it should fire, rack it, pull the trigger, there you go. Check it, it's all together. She's put together perfectly, and you're good to go. You're good to fire. She's locked, rocked, and ready to go. So, there you go, guys. That is the taking apart, cleaning, and reassembly of the Sky CPX2 9mm double action pistol. Hope you guys enjoyed. And, uh, again, I know I made a mistake in the beginning, or in the middle there with the whole direction of the spring, but we're human, so it happens. Um, but the best part about it is we corrected it, and I didn't end the video not correcting it or pointing it out, and you guys viciously correcting me on the comments. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next video, which will be on the Phoenix Armed uh, 22 Long Rifle, uh, which is a blowback pistol. All right, guys. Stay safe. Stay watching, and see you on the next vid. Later.